Hi everyone, welcome to this new program that we're launching here in FCBC. I'm here with my dad, Pastor Kong. Say hi. Hi, Pastor Kong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not, not wrong there. Uh, but I, I think, I think uh, it's a very interesting thing. Um, we're going to be launching this entire Bible study program here in FCBC that everyone can just easily flow along. But I thought before we actually jump into the entire program itself, I wanted to spend some time just talking to my dad about Bible study and about why we're going through this particular book. Uh, first, you know, uh, a couple of months uh, ago, I was just talking to my dad about how he and I can work together. And we said that, well, helping the church go through a time of studying the Bible will be, will be good. So today, I just want to pick his brains a little bit just for us to hear him. Uh, we're going to be just having our breakfast here and, and chit-chat and talk a little bit. We've got uh, real food, right? Yeah, <laughs> this, is, this is not a set. I can actually eat it. <laughs> yeah, okay, so it's, it's real food. We've got, uh, he's got his coffee. I'm a, I'm a Milo drinker, very much like one of my cell members <clears throat> a few years ago. Uh, but yeah, okay, so I think, I think, you know, I was just talking to my dad a couple of months ago and I, I said that, you know, in this new phase for us as a church, you know, one way we can work better together is, uh, uh, I mean, currently there's so many things that we need to do for the church between the, the, the current uh, situations and uh, a lot of new things that we're going to introduce for the church. And I thought one thing that I would like to tap on to my dad is that he's got a wealth of knowledge in the area of the, the Bible, in the area of ministry, uh, both in your, your, I think, what, 40 over years in ministry and also in your time in seminary and everything. So I want to tap into that. And I think it's, it's, it's great because both of us still have this uh, key role in serving our church and our community at, at this point in time. So as we started today, I've just got a few questions I thought it would be good for us to establish first before we actually go into the Bible study. I mean, this is our first episode, I think for the next uh, nine weeks in total. Okay, there are going to be nine episodes, including this one in total, that we are going to start going through the book of Ephesians. We're breaking it down into two parts, one in the first half of the year and the second uh, part in the second half of the year. So um, with that, let's just kind of get started with that. I think uh, that I... I put down four questions I would like to ask you and I think it's good for us to kind of uh, share this as a, a basic premise and foundation as we enter into this program. Um, we don't have to answer very long but I mean we can just talk a little bit about it but I think the first question I have for that I would like to ask and I think it's good for everyone to hear is to you, what is Bible study? It's, I mean, I know it can be quite a deep question and everything, but to you, what will you define as Bible study? I, I don't think it's a very deep question. It's the preoccupation of my life. I, I, I found that in all these 50 years of ministry, uh, my, what I major in is to be able to study the Bible and to be able to preach it uh, in a way that is not academic, but in a way that is very life-changing. Uh, I remember when my ministry was started uh, in, in a previous church, uh, I spent up to about 30 to 40 hours a week preparing my message. And, and it's not just the writing of the message, but the studying of the passage uh, to understand the word and then to, uh, to seek to live it out in my life uh, that particular week. I basically grew from my own sermons uh, all these years. But uh, the sermon that's based on scripture, not just, uh, uh, just something that you know, is a good idea, but uh, uh, be able to be solidly uh, supported from the word of God. And yet... Uh, doesn't come across like some kind of a classroom, just uh, studying a book, but uh, uh, speaking about life. So, uh, what is Bible study? I, I find that this is very important because uh, I, I have noticed that uh, many uh, Christians uh, today, uh, they kind of know the Word of God in bits and pieces. You know, they know a, a verse, John 3.16, and then they know Romans 3.23, and they know uh, something in the Old Testament uh, that, oh, God has given you a hope and a future and, and so forth. But uh, they are just kind of uh, uh, sporadic, uh, uh, kind of uh, just separate verses that we try to piece together. I find that that kind of understanding uh, can be quite shallow. I think uh, because we, we must be able to understand uh, the context of every verse in the light of the, the, the writer, uh, the situation where it's written, so that you can understand the actual meaning. Otherwise, we can assign to it things and make it say things that it either doesn't say or we do not understand the full ramification so you're of what it says. So you kind of saying like uh, looking at scripture in a sense of, giving a sense of totality to yeah. scripture rather than looking mm. at a particular verse in isolation, yeah. which that, I mean, it... It may come across one way, but it may not be actually the yeah. true meaning behind it. And yet to understand in totality, you need to understand, uh, for example, uh, when Paul writes about certain things, 
okay? What is Paul's mindset? Uh, what, is, what are the situation he uh, was facing? Uh, and then you understand the context uh, and you'll be a bit different. You know? so, so therefore, sometimes a word is used by him. For example, uh, the word salvation in Paul's mind is very different from uh, salvation in the mind of the writer of Hebrew, whom we do not know who exactly that is. Okay? Uh, not that they contradict, but they, they focus on different aspects. And you can only see these nuances when you study that passage, study the book and understand its context. Uh, and I think that enriches your understanding so that you will not make uh, just a very generous statement which may apply in a certain situation which may not apply mm. to us. So I think that gives you a fuller understanding of the Bible, uh, uh, seeing it as a whole. That's why we even talk about, you know, maybe taking the church through some kind of a Bible survey through the whole Bible so mm. that, that whenever we read a verse, we know its context and therefore we can accurately interpret what it means yeah, as this, much as we could. Yeah, That's actually good. So, I mean... What I've tried to do as much as possible over the years is uh, at least at least once a year we try to go through one book as much as possible. Yeah. So I think in the last couple of years, uh, if all of us recall, just last year we went through the book of uh, First Peter. Uh, prior to that, I think we went through the book of Jonah, went through the book of Job. Uh, earlier, beyond for that, we went through uh, we did some through the book of Joshua, through the book of Acts, uh, and and so on. But yeah, I think when you look at the whole book, it there's a lot of uh, I, I've said this sometimes when I preach that there's a lot of richness in scripture yeah. and some things that you think as, at a glance you may think it's not an important detail but when you see the totality uh, the total picture it's actually very interesting and it gives some additional things so just remember I was talking to you one time and I was saying how uh, when, when we look at the book of First Peter and it's written you know how, how uh, we have to endure fiery trials and I think you know, sometimes we read today, okay, that fiery trials, maybe just a... Uh, it's a symbolic. Yeah. Symbolic, or it's a very uh, exaggerated way to... A dr very dramatic way of saying it. But then, when I went in and I, and I, and I was reading, I realised that was a time where uh, the Emperor Nero, was it? Yeah, Nero yeah. was actually uh, burning Christians alive. And so, it gives the additional context when you read that, hey, fiery trials. And when other parts of Scripture says that we have not suffered to the point of bloodshed, I mean... It come, it, there's so much richness in what they're writing. It comes alive mm. to, to, to that sense. Mm. So, yeah, I think that's the beauty of, of us looking at Scripture in, in totality. And, are, and, and the importance of also going through the Bible book by book uh, in our own devotion in our, our time is that uh, if we don't do it, we tend to emphasize on truth that we really like to major on. You know, something that grab our hearts, we like to. Yeah, yeah. But then, you, as you go through it, you, you'll come across passages that address this issue that yeah. you rather avoid uh, uh, confronting. And yet, the Word of God is the, the whole gamut, the whole revelation of God is to really allow the searchlight of His truth to uh, penetrate into every aspect of our life. In fact, we like to look at things that we are strong at yeah. and we don't, not, we don't want to face issues that we are really weak in. And then uh, uh, studying a Bible, book by book, that's why uh, the, the, the Living Word, uh, living uh, the Living journal, Life yeah. Journal is good because it takes you through and then you will face passages that you never thought existed in the Bible and yet it brings out truth that uh, does uh, confront you in certain areas of our weaknesses. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's... Mm. that's mm. That's very good. So, I, I want to just, I suppose I want to jump on something that you mentioned uh, earlier on. You mentioned something that, you know, we're going to study the Bible and, and you mentioned this in a way that is not overly academic. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess uh, that kind of caught my attention because, well, firstly, we, we tend to, in the church, we call it Bible study. You know, and if, in fact, something we call it Bible study class or Bible study course yeah. or whatever. It, mm -hmm. You get this sense that it's almost like you're going to school, you're going to university kind of thing. But at the same time, you mentioned that you don't want it to be overly academic. I don't know, what, what do you really mean by that? You, you know, uh, uh, I mean, we all know that verse in uh, 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete thoroughly equipped for every good work. So, uh, you, you realise in that verse that, well, first of all, it's, it's inspired by God. Uh, the literal meaning means it's, it's God breathed. God breathed His life into that word. So, it's more than just a, a piece of literature. It is actually God's uh, uh, very spirit-inspired uh, truth. Now, 
Uh, it does say that it's profitable for doctrine. We are, it's important in doctrine. If our belief system is wrong, then our life will be wrong. We, we, we act on what we believe, and that's truth. But then we don't stop there. We don't stop to understand truth. He says that it's good for correction. Now, that's really get you uh, involved. He it says it's meant to correct you. Uh, 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 is meant to you know, point to areas in your life that needs uh, to be examined uh, for instruction in righteousness. So this is an instruction manual. It's not just a, uh, a theological thesis for us to examine and then say, wow, this is really profound. And, uh, and we kind of take pride in that because knowledge puffs up. Is it? But it's meant to really point out areas that you need to work on. And then it says that a man of God may be complete thoroughly equipped for every good work. So it's also an instruction manual for ministry. It actually gives you a handle how uh, we can be effective in our lives. So, so therefore, I think that's really important. Now, you know, in the seminary, I, uh, I actually uh, major in what you call pastoral ministry because I want something practical, right. okay? And, uh, and, and then I went to this department and I discovered that uh, most of the professors that teaches pastoral ministry have never pastored before. So that got me a bit worried. But then I was drawn to this department in the pastoral ministry on homiletics. It's the art of preaching. And, and I think this is one of my giftings. So I spent a lot of time. Uh, in fact, by the second year, I was uh, actually chosen to uh, review uh, the preaching of my underclassmen and actually give them critique and so forth. And, uh, but when I walked into that department, uh, one of the first things I heard from, from the head of the department of pastoral ministry, who is also heading uh, the section on uh, preaching, uh, because he's a very good preacher too. Uh, his name is Dr. John Reed. And, and he looked at us, you know, who want to major in this. He met all the people. We choose our major. We want to major in this. And he made a statement that I never forgot. He looked straight at, at us and said, I want you to know, I do not want you to preach the Bible. And that kind of, you know, threw, you know blow, blow, blew us away because... I went to Dallas Seminary because it is the kind of uh, the sanctuary, the, the, the place where they teach the Bible exegetically yeah. and uh, in expository preaching. But then he go on to say, don't preach the Bible. Preach life. And make sure everything you say comes from the Bible. Mm. And, and in fact, I became one of the uh, top preachers at the end of uh, my final year. Uh, there were, I think they chose four to showcase, and I was one of them in, to preach to the whole uh, student uh, body in the chapel. And, um, and I remember sitting there and my, my uh, homiletics professor looked at me. He says, you know, Lawrence, there are almost a thousand graduating here. <clears throat> Most of them will never be able to make the bridge between just preaching the Bible and preaching life. But those who can preach life so that you walk away, don't just think about what the Bible says, you think about what God says to you in your life from the Bible, uh, they will be mightily used by God. And I, I determined, I said, I want to preach life. Uh, right. So, you know, you know, so like, I, I guess maybe, wait, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah, yeah. because if, when you're talking about, you know, not overly academic, is it like, <laughs> I guess with any kind of, of skill or particular, uh, yeah, I guess, skill, lah, okay, or any discipline, there is sort of like a sort of like there's a theory aspect of it and there's the practical aspect of it and I think what you're saying is that we can also end up in a place where we can know about Christianity know about doctrine know about scripture and the Bible in a very theoretical way and it's not wrong in itself but it's just theory until we actually execute it practically or we live it out practically yeah. and we apply it in our lives yeah. Yeah. which maybe this is a good uh, kind of a segue into the next question which I have for you which I think some of it has been answered, but again, I just want to state it in a very obvious manner. Um, what would you say is the end in mind or the end game for Bible study? Yeah. What is the end in mind? Maybe uh, I would try to use my study with all of you uh, through the book of Ephesians uh, to illustrate that. Uh, you will, you'll find that uh, as I do this, you, you, uh, you will come across like I'm preaching a message to you because that's what I believe in. Because I do not believe in telling you what the Bible says. I'm, I, I believe every time we teach the Bible, I need to tell the audience what you are to do as a result of what the Bible says. Mm. 
Okay, uh, you, you know, we have this uh, uh, observation, interpretation, yeah. application. To me, application is the most important. However, unless you get the right interpretation, application is going to be wrong. So, so uh, uh, let's not use the word academic. I think we need to go through the truth and understand from Scripture. Don't, don't, don't impose on it meaning that you want to have, but, but let the Bible speak for itself, either from the word, from the phrasing, from the context and everything else. But then if we stop at that, uh, we have not learned uh, anything. I guess I've come through uh, a seminary for four years. I've seen thousands of my fellow classmates. And I can tell you that uh, some of them go, just go through it for four years and they never attended a church. They've never talked to someone about Jesus Christ. They've never really uh, lived in it. In fact, they cheat in the exam. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just amazing, okay? But it's amazing that they can study the Bible and cheat in the exam uh, 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 and, and so forth. So I just feel like uh, there, there got to be a balance between truth and the application of the truth. And, and uh, you will hear me say it more than once, but, but I say uh, 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 truth is not learned until it is lived. Yeah. All right? Uh, if a truth learned academically means you have learned that truth, then we are all geniuses, but we're not. Okay? Uh, until it's lived, uh, it's not learned. And I tell you, this uh, is inscribed in my spirit. Uh, so therefore, when I prepare a message, I, I just want to make sure that I live it first. Mm. And so therefore, I grow on my messages. Okay? Right. Uh, uh, and, and my teaching has built me up in my, as, a, as a man of God. You know? so, so in that sense, um, I, I think that's great. Your, your, your framework for us is that application is so important. Yep. You know, of course, yes, we must make correct observations. Yeah. We must have accurate interpretation yes. that is consistent with uh, Scripture. But at the same time, if we don't apply that, it is incomplete. Yeah. Okay, uh, um, love your neighbor. Okay, yeah, I mean, we can, I think a lot of people, we know that's the truth, but do we actually live that out? And I will go so far to say that if you do not live it up, you really don't understand the passage. Right. Yeah, you, yeah. you can explain some, some propositional statement. Yeah. Okay, but you don't know his spirit. Right. And the word of God is more than just a, a, a fact. It, it, is, it is understanding the, the spirit behind the fact. Yeah. And I think that cannot be experienced until so, you, you live it. So, and just so that everyone's clear, we're, we're not here to say that the theory aspect is not important. Yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, if the theory is not there, then what is there to apply? Yeah. Okay, but it's, it's both and. I mean, you've said this many times, it's not just an either or. We yeah. always get caught up in either or, but it's both and. Yeah. We must know the truth, we must know the theory, we must understand what it says, but then there must be that practical aspect of applying it in our life. So, so, in fact, to underscore that, uh, when you asked me to take a series of Bible study just to build uh, the church, uh, I chose the book of Ephesians. There are a number of reasons why, okay? Uh, of course, one reason is that actually I pray that God is going to use this series because once it's recorded down, it can be given to any new believers because it is a, a short book, six chapters, so you don't get tired right. uh, of just a long, you know, like 20, 30 chapter uh, book. But, in it, it encapsulates everything about the Christian life, what we believe and how we could live out the truth that we claim to believe mm. and, and so forth. So the context is amazing. So, so it's, it's, it's like a, there's so, much, so many nuggets there that, that kind of wrap the whole Christian life from, from your faith to, your, to what you do uh, in the daily living, how you relate to people, and then how you deal with circumstances that are you know, overwhelming you and fight the spiritual battle. So I think it's good. But the other reason why I, I, I've chosen it, right. because I'm more confident in that, is this is the first book when I went to seminary, okay, after I think uh, more than a year of Greek. Uh, the first year of Greek, you learn all the grammar and, and stuff just to even be able to read it, all right? And then the first book you, you kind of translate will be the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John is one of the most simple. Uh, I think John is a very simple person. Uh, his truths are profound. You know, he, mm. he makes statements you know, that are profound in the beginning is the word, you know? But the Greek is very simple. So we, we can actually, after some uh, year of studying uh, Greek, you can read through it. But the next book I did, which is more into exegesis, that means actually go and translate that book into English. 
is the book of Ephesians. Mm. And I was so motivated. I mean, I actually study every word, every Greek word in that book. I, I can give you that stack of, of, of uh, notes I have and, 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 and structure the book and, and see how the sentences are connected grammatically. Uh, uh, and now I, I couldn't do it now, but at that time I can just read the book of uh, uh, Ephesians in, in Greek. Greek yeah. All right, but uh, now uh, it's been almost 40, 40 old years. But, uh, uh, but then I, I felt like I, I've given it enough thoughts so that uh, I, I can just build a teaching uh, that does not bore you with a lot of grammatical details. But what I say, what that book means, I have gone through a process mm. which I can speak. You know, actually in preaching, you only give the final conclusion. I mean, you, you, you might have to do 20 hours of work, right? You just give about uh, one hour right. of uh, right, right. Uh, the, the, the lessons you have learned. So, so I felt a bit more confident mm. that I could uh, build something worthwhile. And yet, uh, I was just sharing with you and uh, I will share uh, with the rest. I, I found new revelation that I, it moved me to tears, you know, uh, that I was just so overwhelmed uh, with the truth of God because, because what I studied 40 years ago, uh, uh, I studied the same thing, but I have changed. I have mm. grown. I have grown to know the Lord. I have experienced more of life. And when I look at the truth, there are some things that jump at me that I missed. Yeah. And that's the beauty about studying the Bible. You never kind of... Uh, you continue le you're yeah. learning... Yeah, from, even from the same the passage, yeah. you, you see things that you never saw because you, you never had that context uh, in your life in which you can see the anger. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think that's, that's, uh, that's yeah. amazing. And... I, I suppose one maybe one last uh, thought I, I have, you know, is I, we didn't actually prepare to talk about this, but as you were sharing, it just came came to my mind because, um, well, to be honest, I, I'm not sure how many of you watching this you actually feel that way, but I've heard people say before that sometimes Bible study is um, it feels very daunting to 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 them, you know, and and I mean hearing all you're saying now, what. Uh, yes, we, we appreciate everything you, you're saying. You know, we prepared Ephesians and everything. Actually, when my dad prepared this whole teaching, he went to pull out some of his old notes that were on typewriter, one, right? Like way... <laughs> no, handwritten, handwritten notes. <laughs> so, so, so way back up. But, but I mean, that, that's where... Of course, it's great. We go... We, in our church, we have leaders, we have pastors who can teach us. But sometimes, some people can feel like it's very daunting because, well, but Pastor Kong, I'm not you. I didn't study the Greek. I didn't have how many years in, 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 in seminary. I haven't pastored a church for how many years. I don't have that kind of experience. And, and they feel like, well, I just feel so overwhelmed. So I kind of met people before. They say, Pastor, I look at the Bible and, and they, they kind of panic. Yeah. In, in fact, uh, in fact I, I, I want to really correct this uh, misnomer. You, you know, some people have said, oh, if you go to a seminary and you learn in Greek and Hebrew, you will really know exactly what that pastor says. Uh, I've got news for you. You know, first of all, you go to a seminary, even if you study three years of Greek, okay, you are not good enough in Greek to understand all the nuances. Okay, how many years have you studied English? Will you dare to claim that you honest, you really know all the literature when you read a, a, a good English book that you understand all the nuances? I mean, I've studied many years of Japanese. I could hardly speak Japanese uh, fluently. So I realized you really don't know that. That's number one. But number two, uh, I really want to say this to every believer. The Word of God, the Bible, is written in the vernacular. In other words, it's written for ordinary men. In fact, there is an axiom in interpreting the Bible. He says, if the simple sense make good sense, seek no other sense. In other words, if this verse simply says this, and it's the simplest, the simplest explanation of what it means, makes good sense, it's not ridiculous, yeah. then accept that. And that's good enough, okay? We tend to look deep means go and find something that you, you thought you can unearth. Actually, it's not, all right? So I uh, haven't gone through that, okay? That's why I've always encouraged you. You just know how to do, and, and, and we're going to work on that one day. I, I'm going to one day maybe have a session on, you know, in fact, this is a project uh, that uh, Pastor Edmund Chan and I are, are working on and we want to develop a Bible renaissance, going back to the Bible. But we want to go to pastors. You know, some of the fastest growing churches in the world, and that's what told to me by Peter Wagner, who travel around the world, are pastors who have never been to seminary, but they are used by God powerfully. And they are not 
some, you know, kind of uh, weird theology. They are really true to the word, okay? And, uh, and we, we discovered that if we use simple tools mm. and understand simple uh, principles of interpretation, most of us uh, will, will be able to derive a lot of truth uh, from the scripture. So, so I, I, I feel like uh, uh, we don't need all this uh, Greek and Hebrew. In fact, that's why uh, I, 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 I don't want uh, even you go and spend four years learning all the Greek and Hebrew when we use simple tools and you will never be, you will never be better than those who translated the Greek and the uh, Testament and the Old Testament uh, Hebrew text into English. Mm. Okay, you can never beat them. So, so the best way to study the Bible is use a few different translations so that you see the slightly different uh, uh, you know, shades of meaning, and you begin to discern what would be, you know, the the the, the whole meaning of this uh, text. There's so much tools out there that that if we're serious about studying God's word, uh, uh, it's something that you, uh, you 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 can do as a as as just a believer. Actually, since you talk about that tools, I mean, for all of us, I mean, I think a lot of us are familiar with this. Um, if you go to, I can't remember the exact website, but it's Bible Gateway, basically. Mm-hmm. A lot of us use that to prepare our sermons and everything. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. one of the things I do for me every time I go to Bible Gateway. I'm looking at uh, five different translations. Yeah. In fact, I, uh, I'm i not that proficient in Mandarin, but I also keep one Mandarin version open because sometimes the Mandarin also, just the phrasing, the different language gives a added level to that truth that you're reading. So, I mean, such tools is important. When we go through this uh, uh, study, my dad may refer to one particular version or another, but on your own, you look through it, have a di- lot of different versions. As you look through it, it'll give you, it'll make it a lot richer. Yeah. Uh, then it, yeah. and, and give you a lot of other truths to it. Just, just remember, uh, one of the greatest fear is that the, the high church that became the Roman Catholic Church in the past, uh, where they basically say only the priests can interpret the Bible, and 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 so so the our faith or the believers then will just contain within just what the church says. Yeah. But the revival the, came the and the Reformation. Yeah. The Reformation is Martin Luther. Uh, allow that Bible to be translated into German in the vernacular so that the average man yeah. can read it and when they read it for themselves, revival broke out. People come to know Jesus Christ. Why? Because it wasn't written to scholars. Yeah. So sometimes the scholars make a simple truth more profound when God is trying to make profound truth simple in the Word of God. So, so I would encourage those who want to go through with me in the book of Ephesians, just read the book like 20 times. Just read it until it kind of seeps into you yeah. and uh, meditate upon it both day and night and you'll find that there's so much truth to, to be used. And I think that's a great thing to pick up on. That, that was really the heartbeat behind that part of the Reformation to, mm. make, to make it available for every person. Mm. And... I mean, if we are real about this, we have heard many, as a pastor, I've heard many times where some people feel like they would actually say, make statements that they feel that they are not educated enough to be a Christian. Yeah. You know, when we, when we work with some of the elderly or we have people who are, who are illiterate and so on, they feel like, oh, because, you know, all this, I, 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 can't, I, yeah. I, I, I can't be a Christian because I, I, it's so much studying, but it's never, it was never meant to be that way. It, it, we have somehow got something wrong and ended up in it, that place. It, it's so sad. It's so, so sad. In fact, the thing that really blew my mind is when I visited the underground church in China, mm. for years they were not able to surface and, uh, and people don't have a Bible. And there are many believers who memorize the whole New Testament. I mean, memorize the whole New Testament, okay? And they will come up with profound questions for me, that I couldn't, that stunned me because he said, you know, I've been thinking about this verse, and uh, <laughs> but it's all in their mind, and and they love the Lord, they know the truth, and uh, they so, live it out, yeah, and they live it out, and, and they experience the truth far more than what we do, and 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 I went there and preached my heart out, and and I discovered that they have understanding about the Word of God far deeper than what we mm. have ever, you know, begin to understand. Yeah, so I think that's good. I think we've heard a lot uh, at this session, and I think we're going to bring it to a, a close. Uh, but I, I hope you guys are very excited for this entire period. I think it's good. It's a good exercise for all of us as a church to mm. come together, to study this, to study this together. And next time, as a cell group, you can come and watch this together whenever you want to as well. I think it's going to be great. Probably, maybe, maybe that just one last thing that you want to say to everyone before mm. next uh, next episode we get on with the rest of the teaching. What is one last thing you want to say to them today? I, I hope we journey together in the Book of Ephesians. There's so much truth about the blessings of God and the benefits of the blessing and what that means in our life. 
I, I hope you are prepared not just to sit through some kind of an intellectual discourse with me, but you will just allow the Holy Spirit to say, what are the things in my life that got to be changed so that I'm more usable by God? You know, one of the biggest problems about applying God's Word is we tend to apply God's Word in the area of our strength and then just stroke ourselves and say, yeah, we're doing pretty good. Every time we study the Word of God, look for the area of our life in which we are not practicing this and then allow the Word of God to convict us, to reprove us. And I just really pray that your life will be changed, that your faith Amen. will be built up and, and, and you will be able to do exceeding abundantly beyond what you ask or think to infinity and beyond because that verse comes from Ephesians yeah. and you will begin to understand what it is to go from infinity and beyond. Yeah. That's, 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 that's beautiful. So, when I close this time for all of us with a word of prayer and I believe that as we continue the rest of this uh, Bible study through the book of Ephesians, uh, next thing onwards is going to be just a great time. So mm -hmm. Lord, we thank you for this time that uh, we just had sharing with one another today and I pray for everybody watching this as well that as we enter into this program, Lord, speak to us, guide us and we pray that we will not just be uh, but be hearers of the word, but we'll be doers of the word. We'll live it yeah. out and we'll apply it. And Lord, we know sometimes we try our best to apply, but we still fail, we still struggle. But we thank you that your, your grace is sufficient for us. We thank you that you empower us with your strength to continue to walk this journey every single day of our lives. Yeah, so we, I, we commit Pastor Kong as he brings this teaching to all of us over the next couple of weeks and for the rest of the year as well. And for every single person listening, I bless you that Truly, I always say this, your eyes will be open to see the things that God are revealing to you. Your ears will be open to hear God speaking to you. And most of all, your heart will be open. Your heart will be soft to, be, to, to encounter the Holy Spirit, to be Amen. convicted by Him, to be touched by Him, to be transformed by Him. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So thank you for joining us today. We look forward to the teaching from Pastor Kong from next week, next Amen. week onwards. God bless you. <laughs>